Therapy arrives in many different forms. A lot of you have turned to running for physical health, mental health, maybe to feel freedom or clarity, especially during this pandemic. Well, here's a guy who can relate. New York Times bestselling author and ultra marathon man, Dean Carnassus. Dean, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me run by. Yeah, so, okay, I often say there are people who really love running and there are people who learn to love it. You weren't always a runner. Uh, you laced up, as I say, during sort of a life crisis, right? Well, I used to run, loved to run when I was a little boy, and I ran competitively until I was a freshman in, in high school, uh, age 15. And then you're right, I stopped running altogether at 15 and um, didn't take it up again until I was 30 years old. I was in a, in a bar in San Francisco on my 30th birthday, doing what a lot of us do on our 30th birthday. And at midnight, I told my buddies I was leaving, and they said, let's have another round of tequila to celebrate. And I said, no, I'm going to run 30 miles instead right now to celebrate. And that's when I started running again. It's amazing. Uh, and you've been really demonstrating this mind-body connection, I think, long before it became trendy to talk about by really pushing the limits here. So we know you've run 135 miles nonstop across Death Valley, running a marathon to the South Pole, and then running 50 marathons in all 50 states in 50 consecutive days. So some people would call that crazy. Uh, what do you call it? <laughs> I call it the ultimate adventure. I mean, not everyone has ever been to all 50 states, let alone run a marathon in all 50 states. And, you know, to do it in 50 days uh, was all the, the more, you know, uh, grand, I guess. And no one thought it could be done. And, I, you know, I figured the only way to, to prove it could be done is to try it. So it was, it was quite an amazing experience, you know, traveling the country, uh, meeting people along the way, uh, you know, seeing, seeing the country at six miles an hour. Uh, it was really a, a pinnacle moment in my career. So one of my favorite parts of uh, your book, The Ultra Marathon Man, was when you, des you described getting pizza delivered on the side of the road while you're running. So um, what do you get out of these experiences? You call it the ultimate adventure, but at this point in your life, what do you get out of it? You know, to me, running is it's kind of a rebirth. Uh, I think every runner can relate to, you know, having the, the weight of the world on your shoulders and, you know, going for a run and coming back through the door and feeling um, you know, renewed and rejuvenated and, uh, you know, afresh. So there's some magic in running and it's certainly a struggle. I think every runner is used to, you know, uh, dealing with adversity and overcoming obstacles, but I think we've learned there's, there's magic in misery. Hmm. Uh, okay. And you've got a new book out now called a runner's high. Tell me about that. Well, it's my fifth book, and I think it's um, my best book ever. Um, honestly, it's uh, you know it's been uh, a thirty-year journey that I've been doing these ultra marathons, and it's about uh, a race that I did, um, you know, twenty-eight years ago, a hundred-mile race uh, through the mountains here in California, and I returned to it after all that time, and I describe you know the experience of both uh, the highs and the lows. I talk a lot about my family in the book. And I also talk a lot about my wife, who's um, from Texas, from Dallas. Yeah, huge supporters in your family, by the way. That is, uh, that is essential, I think, um, for what you've been able to accomplish. Um, I'm wondering, since we have you, do you have any advice for new runners or maybe people who are really trying to pick themselves back up after a surgery, an injury, or even just a pause through this pandemic? Yeah, I would say start from the ground up. So invest in a good pair of shoes. Uh, footwear technology has come a long way in the past decade. So get a good pair of shoes. And then just try to run for three continuous minutes. You don't need a fancy GPS watch. Uh, you, just, you just need something to keep track of your time. And the idea is not to run for a minute and a half and walk the rest, but run for three continuous minutes. And when you can do that, work up to five minutes, uh, 10 minutes, and then 15 continuous minutes. And once you can run 15 continuous minutes, then try to run a 5K, which is 3.1 miles without stopping. And I think that's a good stair step, stair step into getting back into running or just starting out. So I think that's great advice. Dean, Time Magazine has named you one of the top 100 most influential people in the world. So give us a little sneak peek here. What's next? What do you have up your sleeve after everything you've already accomplished? Well, it's funny you should ask. Um, I'm heading to Australia in August to, to run across Australia. So I've, I've run across America and I figured let's, uh, let's take this roadshow to a different continent. So uh, <laughs> I'm heading down under.
Man, you continue to impress me. I really appreciate your time and uh, have been a super fan from afar. And it, it's really cool to be talking to you right now. So thanks a lot. And I look forward to uh, reading this new book. Enjoy runner's high.